welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee. If you're new here today, I'm going to be sharing some practical tips on how to create a minimalist wardrobe. And before we get into it, I do want to note that minimalism is truly in the eye of the beholder. There are no real set rules that you have to follow when it comes to building a minimalist wardrobe. So take what you need from this video, but ultimately remember to do what feels right for you. I also want to note that my definition of what a minimalist wardrobe looks like is not having the least amount of things or just the bare bone basics. It's about being intentional of what you're keeping in your wardrobe or what you're bringing in to make sure that those pieces actually bring you joy. I know that the process of figuring out your style, what you should be keeping, what you should be letting go of can be really overwhelming, especially if you have a closet filled to the brim with clothes like I had when I first started. And that's exactly why I wanted to share some useful and practical tips with you guys today to hopefully make this process of decluttering and curating a wardrobe that you can be proud of a little bit easier. If you didn't already know, before I began this journey of self-discovery and minimalism, I actually had a very unhealthy relationship with shopping. I used retail therapy as a means to cope with anxiety and depression. And because of this, I was left with a closet full of clothes, but I never felt like I had anything to wear and it was overwhelming and I didn't like my style. And I think the worst part of it was that I spent so much money on clothes that I had to say no to a lot of fun experiences to hang out with friends and go out because I just couldn't afford it. If you enjoy videos on practical minimalism and intentional living, be sure to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And now let's get right into my practical tips for creating a minimalist wardrobe. I'm personally a visual person who needs inspiration for things like creating my outfits and putting things together. And what I found to really help me curb my habit of shopping impulsively is to create seasonal style mood boards on Pinterest. And basically what this mood board is, is a way to represent what exactly I want in my wardrobe. One thing that I wanna mention that you should be wary of when creating a mood board is to make sure that you're pinning styles that you know would work with the lifestyle that you currently have. It's easy to get caught up in wanting a particular style, but then when you actually purchase a piece that's similar to what you pinned, you end up putting it to the back of the closet because it doesn't really work well with what you spend most of your time doing. When I pin photos, I stick to examples that I know I'll feel comfortable in and enjoy wearing. If you wanna see what boards I have, feel welcome to follow me on Pinterest at Renee Everyday. Curate your closet based on your lifestyle. To expand a little bit more about what I mentioned earlier with taking your lifestyle into consideration when you're creating your mood boards, curate your closet based on what you spend most of your time doing. Are you someone that is extremely active? Do you enjoy hiking? Then maybe that means majority of your closet will be filled with athleisure wear or clothing that's breathable. Or maybe you're somebody that works from home and you work for yourself, so you're an entrepreneur and you don't enjoy wearing professional attire, so you don't have any because you don't need it. Thinking about what you spend most of your time doing can really help when you are looking for a direction of where to start with building your minimalist wardrobe. Decluttering and intentionally curating a wardrobe that you love is going to take some time, especially if you're trying to revamp your style completely from one to another. So don't feel like you have to have it all figured out tomorrow. When you start to put pressure on yourself, you might start purchasing items that aren't necessarily exactly what you want, but are similar to what you want. And then eventually you'll probably declutter that item if it isn't exactly what you want. And so you end up wasting a lot more time and a lot more money and it's just really not worth it when you can just take a step back, slow down and approach it in an intentional way. I am personally still working on creating my dream wardrobe and it's taken me a long time. I'm really picky and intentional about what I'm purchasing. The same goes for decluttering your wardrobe. It might feel really overwhelming at first. You see this pile and mountain of clothes just laying on your bed and you may end up with this massive maybe pile at the end of it where you're 
not sure if you want to let go of that of that piece of clothing or if you want to keep it. And I just want you to know that it's okay to sit on that piece of clothing just a little bit longer. I actually encourage you with your maybe pile, if you do end up having one, is to challenge yourself to wear those pieces of clothing over the course of a month. And then at the end of that month, reevaluate and just see, okay, did I like this item? Do I want to let go of it? And make your decision that way. So if there are pieces that you feel like, okay, I need this to pull everything together and it's an essential piece, but I'm on a tight budget and the ones that I found are really expensive, maybe try looking second hand for a piece that is similar. You can search online through Poshmark, Depop, and then my favorite is using Thread Up for shopping secondhand. I think you'll be surprised by how many pieces are actually high quality and in your price range. The second part is if you are wanting a specific item and it's not an essential and it can wait, then save up your money and buy exactly what you want. Invest in the piece that you want. Find peace with being patient until you can afford it. If you're really looking forward to simplifying your wardrobe, but you don't want a capsule wardrobe, it kind of freaks you out to limit yourself to a specific number of items. This was me and I honestly found it really helpful to create these mini capsule wardrobes within my minimalist wardrobe. Just from where I started with having this impulsive shopping habit and a love and a deep appreciation for fashion, it was hard for me to make that huge transition. So I'm going with it slowly. <laughs> but for example, I do have a capsule collection for my athletic wear. And I do plan on creating a capsule collection for loungewear as well as I start to build it out. This has helped me to simplify my wardrobe in some ways where I don't feel like I'm tied down by a certain number, where it, it's starting to feel like I'm putting myself in a position of feeling ashamed if I can't meet that number. I really hope that makes sense. my two to one rule for statement pieces. Again, I do wanna mention there are no rules when it comes to creating a minimalist wardrobe, but personally for me, I found it really useful to set some guidelines or some rules for myself. I really like to have some statement pieces to zhuzh up my wardrobe every now and then, and this is mainly just because I don't want just a plain, neutral, bare basics wardrobe. That's just my personality and my style type. So when I do find a statement piece that's a little bit more on the trendy side and I want to bring it into my wardrobe intentionally, I make sure that I can make two outfits at least with that one piece. So that way I don't have just a whole bunch of odd pieces that don't work well together. <laughs> Getting clear on why you need or want to declutter and simplify your wardrobe can really help if you are currently in the same position that I was before last year, where I spent my money compulsively while shopping. And it can really help if you want to build a healthy relationship with shopping and spending your hard-earned money. For example, maybe one way that you cope with having a bad day right now is through having a retail therapy session. And the reason why you want to be more more intentional with creating your wardrobe and spending less money is because you want to save money so that you can pay off some debt. Or maybe you feel overwhelmed with the amount of clothes that you have and laundry day takes an entire weekend and it frustrates you that you have to spend so much time doing laundry. Or maybe it's because oftentimes you feel like you have nothing to wear and the clothing that you do reach for and you wear often, you feel like it's not really your style anymore. Find out exactly why you are trying to curate a minimalist wardrobe and then write it down so that you can use it as inspiration while you're going through and making these changes. 
I really hope that you enjoyed this video on my practical tips for how to create a minimalist wardrobe. And like I said at the beginning of this video, living a minimalist lifestyle is really in the eye of the beholder. And the root of it is to live your life with intention so that you can simplify where you need it most so that you can create a life that is more fulfilling to you. I think we can sometimes overcomplicate some things. So on my channel, I really want to help you guys understand that it's not this black and white thing, that there's a lot of gray area and it's really about doing what feels right for you. With that being said, be sure to hit the like button down below if you enjoyed this video. It really means a ton to me and feel welcome to subscribe if you enjoy videos on practical minimalism and intentional living. I seriously can't wait to see you guys in next week's video. Bye. <laughs>